Hey, was also thinking, we have set up, my wife has set up our new merchandise room. Check this out here, our stuff over here. So all of these things, merchandise available, uh, the merch shipping, the department and storage is all upstairs. Everything is all going on here. And I thought, you know what? I'll give away. We, we have so much stuff going on, I can't even video all the crap we got going on. This is what I'm gonna put in just a random package from this week's uh, all the way through Friday, so just through tomorrow, uh, through this week's merchandise. So if you guys buy, I'm gonna give one lucky guy a complete, this is the drive shaft off of the dyno. I didn't even have a chance to even show this, but let me tell you, when this thing's behind an engine that's spinning, I think it was spinning about 8,000 RPM, and this thing all breaks and lets go, <laughs> it's bad and it's ugly. Uh, anyways, merch, hats, stickers, hoodies, shirts, all sorts of stuff. Boost fixes everything. I like big boost, cannot lie. Of course, the wagon shirts, all good. We got something for everybody. And these are high quality shirts too. They're not some cheap cheap junk shirt. We always do high quality, nice shirts, nice fit, stay cool. Okay, so we have the rear main off. Now, had some people ask questions or make comments. Maybe it was going backwards and hitting it. That, that is a brand new surface, never been touched. That is the front side of the thrust bearing. So, didn't happen, that's not it. This bearing is perfectly fine. Now, for people that, uh, Playing out, I guess you just don't understand. This, this, these variants have a few, uh, because they're, let's see, so a, there's probably, I don't know, four or 500 miles, uh, especially with Garrett, a lot of aborted passes, some good passes, a lot of aborted passes on the rev limiter, on the trash control. These bearings are very nice. Are they brand new? No. Uh, if you have what you think are brand new bearings coming out of your engine and you, and you tell me that this is, oh my gosh, this looks like crap, I can't believe you run that. You guys are dreaming. This is very nice. This is, this is <laughs> very nice. I would be happy with this bearing coming out of any engine, any horsepower level. That's fine, it, it's perfectly good, period. But, let's go back. So we know now that it's not touching anything in front. My question was, and what I thought was probably happening was, had so much charge pressure that it was pushing forward here and actually pushing through, 
we'll leave this right here, pushing through my rollerized thrust bearing. Pushing through the bearing, forcing this bearing assembly, this bearing assembly here, possibly even like bending this it was having so much. I thought that could probably be the only thing I could think of. Mm, no, don't think so. Because we look at the back side of the bearing. So this is, here's your rear main seal. That means that this is the back of the thrust bearing. So this is where the torque converter transmission pressure are pushing the crankshaft this way. You can see that we, it has, if you remember, go back and look at the video, you saw me prepping this bearing at Sam's shop. This is what it looks like stock. This is what it looks like after I sanded this all down to give it extra clearance so it wouldn't touch this. And it is still coming up and just, it is just touching it. There's no heat in this, but there, it definitely is still touching this. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're going to, now that I have my rollerized thrust bearing off, we're going to actually check our thrust clearance on it now and see what kind of extra thrust, it will have extra thrust clearance because this is the setting thrust. This is what's controlling forward motion. So, Cody, grab that uh, indicator for me, will you? We'll put this over there. Uh, all things considered, I really think that's good. We're gonna look at all these bearings. I'll show you all the bearings. They look great. I'm gonna show you all the rods. Uh, the pistons look great. There's minimal scuffing. Everything looks pretty good there. Uh, people had questions about the side of the rod. You know, maybe the side clearance was all screwed up. Nope, because this is the side clearance. This is the champ chamfer side towards the cheek of the crankshaft. Um, you can, you can look at these rods here. These things all, they, they're great. There's no damage. There's nothing going on. There's no excessive contact. There's nothing happening here with any of this stuff. Pins are great. The pin ends are nice. Pistons are good. Skirts are good. You can look here. Skirts are good. This is minimal, normal stuff for something that makes 4,000 horsepower. That's really nice. That had a little dinger in it. Not sure what's going on there, but that's nothing. That doesn't make the kind of material that you were seeing in there. These bearings all look good. Do they look like brand new bearings out of the box? No. Uh, you start up an engine and five seconds later, they don't look like brand new bearings in a box, especially when it's something that makes actual horsepower. So let's check this thing. So we'll do exactly what we did yesterday, which is we'll check this thrust. We'll set this up and we'll go backwards okay now this is all the way back this is pushed up against the stock portion the unmodified portion of the thrust bearing I gave this portion on the back side lots of clearance so it required the crankshaft to move forward on the rollerized thrust okay we know that this has seven thousandths clearance when this is all assembled showed you that yesterday now let's take a look at how much clearance this thing has now. You just watch the indicator there. It's on zero or close to it. That there is 10, 20, seven. So it has 27. So in order for, uh, yeah, so it still has a charge pressure issue. I don't think that's where any material came from or the minimal amount of material. Also, the other thing I, I heard people say was that the, there was a sudden loss of oil pressure. I don't think that's absolutely true. I have to check with Garrett because I can't remember what that was. But if there was, I don't know where it would come from. We're going to check. I'm going to show you. Actually, I'm going to have Cody tear the oil pump apart and uh, show you how that thing all works. But I wanted to go over critical thinking skills of this is how thrust bearings work, how transmissions work. There is nothing in an engine that makes the crankshaft go forward or backward, nothing. It's always an external force that makes it go backwards, forwards, anything. Uh, acceleration Gs, yep, acceleration Gs drive the crankshaft backwards, but it's very minimal. Pulling the parachutes is nothing compared to acceleration Gs. You can look at that on data loggers, it's not. Um, th so this thing had 
tw has 27 thousandths of thrust, an extra 20. So in order for this uh, bearing to even have touched on this side right here, that means it had to move this entire thrust bearing assembly, which we checked, free clearance, 20, uh, 27, 27 thousandths forward through this bearing. So some, whatever, 20 or 27 thousandths. So it is definitely pushing really hard on the crankshaft and still pushing it forward. It, I suppose it could have made a little bit of material there. Other thing is things grow. Yes, block grows. Um, it is possible that it would add clearance to it, which just makes it even, if it added clearance to it, it'd make it even harder to push all the way forward. It would give it more clearance. It would have to push it even farther forward. So. Uh, checking it warm, checking it hot versus checking it cold, maybe. Uh, I've never checked it hot to cold to actually see that direct comparison. But that's definitely uh, pushing harder through that bearing. M moving my rollerized thrust bearing, which it does not normally do, because uh, that's a pretty stout piece. That is pushing, that's pushing really hard. So I think that thing still needs to get addressed of what's going on there. but. Uh, as far as material, I really don't see it happening. Um, we can take this crankshaft out now. Crankshaft still looks great. Happy about that. Freaking rad caught. Okay, crankshaft looks nice. These main bearings are nice. There is a, a little, a little bit of a uh, over other bearings over there. Yeah, I mean, these are nice. It's very minimal anything run through there. The number one bearing uh, at some point in time does look like it did run one piece of trash through there. But that doesn't leave the kind of material in a filter that we saw. And that would run for about the next 15 years. It doesn't care. Doesn't do any damage and won't do any more continuous damage. So that stuff looks good. Cylinder boards look good. Remember, this is the scratch and dent block. This is something that, that I had broke that, that uh, um, Cletus bought as a used, my personal used engine. So everything just, everything looks great. I'll roll this over for you real quick. So I showed you pistons, rods, bearings, crankshaft looks great. Cylinder boards look great. There's nothing up in the front. Nothing up top. Lifter bores are good. Lifters are good. The rocker arms, we checked that stuff. And you can look at whatever, but it's those look great. There's no problems there. Everything moved fine. Uh, nowhere, no material anywhere. Nowhere, no material up in here either. So everything up in this area is good. Nothing's touching, nothing's rubbing. No problem there. The Oh, I was going to show you the cam bearings real quick. Um, and then, yeah, cam bearings look good too. I'll show you that. And then we'll go to uh, having you, uh, Cody show you the oil pump. Looks nice, looks nice, looks nice, looks nice. Roller bearing in the back. Uh, nothing there. Currently, I think I have found one problem with this whole deal. This engine makes too much horsepower. That's the only problem I can find. Too much horsepower for mullet. Maybe not. They'll get it figured out. They haven't even leaned on this thing yet. But anyways, uh, sorry, there is nothing wrong with this engine, period. Where this material is coming from, or it was very minimal, what's going on, no idea, unless we come up with an oil pump. Cody's gonna tear that apart for you right now.
Okay, so I just jumped over here to see what's going on. And that housing looks fine. That looks fine. Bearings look fine. That section looks good. That section looks good. That section looks good. That section's fine. Rotor. This one's touching something, just a very minute amount. And if you look at the, yeah, if you look at the section here, this is, this is a, this is not the pressure section. This is a scavenge section. This is the pressure section. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, this one is touching a little something. It could cause a little bit of material. This is the pressure section. So, yeah, this is this is definitely eating a little bit of stuff. The rotors really aren't bad at all. I mean, well, I think we'll just kind of touch them up and polish them up and be fine. Nothing major went through. We were thinking about maybe the that little piece of valve spring might have touched something or you know gone through the pump, but it didn't. It wasn't like Bailey's deal when his really broke valve springs. It uh, and that broke valve springs because of the rust situation, not because they're prone to it, not because the engine breaks valve springs. It's because it wasn't. Uh, well, honestly, that one just wasn't properly taken care of. You got to get the methanol out of this stuff. I showed you rusty springs and why it pits them, and then it makes them break at the pit. This one is, yeah, I mean, there's minimal. The bearings look good. Everything looks fine there. It's, yeah, that's really, it's really minimal. But it has eaten just a little bit of stuff through the pressure section is the worst off. This section that is like really nice. This one is half nice. This one is. This one is really nice, so it doesn't look like it picked anything up through the scavenge sections, but it does look like it picked something up on the pressure section. Um, so the scavenge section suck oil out of the pan or out of the engine. The pressure section, the only place it sucks oil out of is out of the tank. So, uh, and you can see it's, it really is not bad. I mean, this is like really, really super minimal, but you can definitely feel it. You can definitely see it, the little scratches in there. Um, minimal, but it definitely is seeing something there that it's not seeing in the rest of the sections. Uh, not bad enough to really do any damage there but uh, that is it I think we're just going to touch this up move this a little bit uh, check the bypass and make sure this is not stuck no won't we'll use that use an improper tool for the job oh, that freaking bypass is stuck though so we'll Oh, that's why the, that's why it lost oil, why it had a sudden loss of oil pressure at idle. Is the bypass is stuck open. That's why I can't move that. So if, if it did have, uh, this wouldn't affect anything at, uh, usually doesn't affect anything at wide open throttle, high RPM. But when it comes down to idle, uh, there's a little piece of crud in there and it's stuck open. So it starts bypassing oil at idle um, so that's the only thing that I can see right there is that the bypass is that see how you can see that um, 
let's put it this way, that shouldn't have that open window. It should be all the way closed. Because it opens up, let's see how you can get light in there, can't see, can you see light in there? You shouldn't be, this is the bypass hole, so you shouldn't be able to see light in there uh, when this thing is unassembled. So uh, that's definitely, I, I just didn't recall him saying it had an oil pressure problem, but maybe it did. Uh, that would definitely be a all of a sudden loss of oil pressure is uh, the pump in the pressure section only picked up a piece of trash um, because the scavenger sections look pretty good. And the pressure section is a little bit eaten up and has run some trash through it. So um, we'll fix all this stuff, but that is a pretty minute problem. And uh, it definitely would have had continued to have low oil pressure at low RPM. And uh, so when you're, a lot of times when you're looking for See, we, we, we're now diagnosing, we're doing the forensics on this thing and, and figuring out what's going on, what happened. When you're at the track and it's 100 freaking degrees outside and there's 5,000 people standing around, and you're trying to figure out what you're doing, what you're, gonna, what you're gonna make happen. A lot of times you're looking for a problem and it's like, okay, found the problem, let's just, all right, screw it. So, uh, you know, Garrett still made the right call. I, I helped him make the call because I said, I don't know, dude. I said, it's, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. Um, but if we would have, you know, really been able to have more time, been able to tear it apart farther, that's really hard to do while you're laying on your back in the middle of the pits. Uh, would have seen that everything's perfect in the engine. There is no problem with the engine. That it's got a little oil pump problem. Why it lost oil pressure, we would have been able to take the pump apart, uh, fix this, it would all come back. And then you, th and if it wouldn't have, I guess if it wouldn't have lost oil pressure right here, if this wouldn't have stuck open, probably never even would have thought about it. Never even given it a second thought. Oh, look at that, a little bit of oil and filter. Eh, who cares? Bang. <laughs> but when it, I guess if it, it would have dropped oil pressure for sure here, because that bypass is stuck open. So anyways, it is always, what is one of my mottos? It is always the little, the little thing that screws you on stuff. It is what it is. So anyways, uh, we're just going to freshen this thing back up, touch home the block up, put it back together, send it back to Cletus because there is nothing wrong with it other than that and that. This stuff will fix, no problem. Hey, also before I forget, make sure that you're, I still all the time am seeing and hearing about people being unsubscribed. You're subscribed, YouTube figures that you shouldn't be subscribed to my channel so they unsubscribe you. I don't know. So check it out, make sure you subscribe, thanks. Don't forget, Monday, so this upcoming Monday, we're gonna go through and go the whole transmission, uh, taking the transmission out, Ashley, new girl Ashley taking the transmission out, and going through with Marty Chance, the converter, trying to uh, diagnose some kind of hidden problem that I got. Gonna cover all that. <laughs>